Hi. A number of weeks ago, I shared a video about responding to civil authorities. In that, we focused a lot on the book of Acts, where in end of chapter 3 of Acts, chapters 4 and chapter 5, the disciples were called in and told not to talk about Jesus anymore. But they responded by saying, you decide whether it's better for us to do what God says or what you say. And so they continued to preach about Jesus despite the threats and beatings from the authorities. Of course, Stephen was stoned in Acts chapter 7 for talking about Jesus. In Acts chapter 12, James was killed for talking about Jesus. And Peter was put in jail, but the Lord sent an angel and freed him. And of course, we also talked about Paul. Paul was spent a lot of time in jail because talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, at least four of the letters that Paul wrote were written from jail. And he says, you can put me in chains, but you can't put the word of God in chains. We also talked about Jesus saying that if you stand for me, if you do what I tell you to do, if you follow me, you will be put in jail and you will be taken before authorities. But he says the Holy Spirit will give you the right words to say when you are questioned or put in jail or gone before the authorities. Now I'd like to share a little bit more today about the book of Daniel, because there are also two major instances in the book of Daniel where believers in the Lord, in order to stand firm with the Lord, had to reject what the authorities told them to do. The first one is in Daniel chapter 3 where it talks about King Nebuchadnezzar building a 90-foot tall statue of himself made of gold. He said, when you hear the musical instruments, you need to bow down and worship this statue. But then um, it says in verse 8 of chapter 3, But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the musical instruments. And this decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods, and they do not worship the gold statue you have set up. So Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they brought him in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue that I have set up? And he says he'll give them one more chance to bow down when they hear the musical instruments. And if not, they will be thrown into the blazing furnace. And then he says, and then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, then God, whom we serve, is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, I just love this, even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods nor worship the gold statue you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded the furnace be heated seven times more than usual, seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. So they throw them into the fire. In fact, three men were killed because it was so hot, the three men throwing them into the fire. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and explained to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach! Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officials, officers, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was even singed, 
and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defiled the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. So there is just an amazing example of God protecting those who stand firm with him and do not compromise their beliefs in him or their love for him. In Daniel chapter 6, a number of years later, Daniel has been named as one of the top three leaders of the country. It says in 6.3 that because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. So the other guys, administrators, got jealous and began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So they went to the king and convinced him to make a law that you can only pray to the king for the next 30 days. And the king, of course, thinking that was a pretty cool thing and only people can pray to me for the next 30 days. And, and so he signed the law because these guys knew that Daniel would not stop praying. And so in verse 10 it says, But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in the upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to God, despite a law that said he would be killed if he did that. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house because he prayed at the same time quite a number of times a day. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. So didn't you say that anyone who would pray to anyone but you would get thrown in the lion's den? That's what I said. Decision stands. It is an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked, said the king. So they told the king, the man Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, see they're not even calling him one of the top leaders in the whole kingdom, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to God three times a day. Of course, the king really liked Daniel and respected him and, and in fact was going to put him over the entire kingdom. And so he was deeply troubled and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of his predicament. Your majesty, you know that according to the law, of the Medes and Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. Of course, we know the story that um, the king was up all night and worried about Daniel and what's going to happen to him and going to get killed by the lions. And so it says, The very next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, Long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed in order that Daniel be lifted up out of the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. The king then gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. The lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Then Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I declare that throughout my kingdom, everyone should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. And so there we see how much of an incredible testimony Daniel remaining faithful, and despite there being a law, a law that said that he would be killed by lions if he prayed, he still was faithful to God and prayed to the Lord. These are two examples of times when if you broke the law, you would be killed. And so despite that, the, uh, the three guys that wouldn't worship the statue and Daniel remained firm with their convictions in the Lord 
and did not follow the law, and the Lord blessed them and helped them. As we saw in the book of Acts, this does not necessarily mean that if we remain faithful to God and, and break a law under penalty of death, that we will be saved. Because Stephen was killed, James was killed, and uh, Peter was ended up being crucified upside down, and a lot of the disciples, as I mentioned in the last one, 11 of the 12 disciples were martyred. It also does not mean that we'll necessarily have to face death because we do not want to obey the laws and orders of the government. But it does call us to remain firm in our faith, to be willing to risk our lives, to be willing to go to jail, to be, to be willing to be criticized in order to stand firm with the truth. As we mentioned before, we need a lot of wisdom on how to do this, to speak respectfully, to be a good witness in the middle of all of it, but in the end, to stand firm with the Lord and continue to seek His wisdom and power and words, as Jesus promised, from the Holy Spirit to share with those who are against the faith that we stand for so firmly. So let us stand firm with our faith no matter what comes before us. Pray to the Lord for wisdom and just to seek Him in all that we do. Pastor Eric talked about the importance of unborn lives. And we've seen several times recently of just silent, peaceful protesters of people outside of abortion clinics just talking to people and praying for people and standing with maybe with uh, signs saying the importance of unborn lives and they've been persecuted and put in jail so whatever it is that the Lord is calling us to do let us do it with our whole heart and do it unto him and for his honor and glory thank you